Hey everyone, welcome to the video. Go to my cheat sheet for today's MLB main slate for today on DraftKings. We have a nice 12 game slate on tap for us on Friday, so really looking forward to that. Anyway, before we continue, if you could leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my videos, I'd really appreciate that. You can also follow me on Twitter at ChrisPinnell16. And if you want access to some extra content, I have my Patreon set up, it's in the link in the description below. You get access to my cheat sheet, my pitching sheet, uh, hitting sheet. It's got projections on there. It's got pretty much everything you need. It's all in one stats database. So it's just to help make your day easier when you're breaking down the slate yourself. And you can also get access to my Slack chat where I, you can talk to me all day, ask me all the questions you want. It's a really good group of guys in there. It's a pretty chill environment. They like just to hang out, talk about the games. No one's intimidating. So everyone is there to help. And I also ha do an updated video if need be, because you know a lot of things can change from 12 a.m. the night to sleep before the night before. So anyway, enough of that. That is in the link in the description below if you are interested. So let's get into today's slate. So I am not looking to spend up top dollar for pitching personally. I don't think the top guys are in the best spots. I will say Lance Lynn's in a good spot versus Detroit, but it's not a good park for pitching. He's really expensive. He's 11,700, and I want some Coors Fields bad. And I'm not going to prioritize Lance Lynn and over Coors guys versus. Uh, Sean Anderson so uh, that's just my opinion on that and then Mike Clevenger has a bad matchup versus the Angels they just don't like to strike out whatsoever so I'm not really interested in Mike Clevenger as much as of an Indians fan as I am it's not the right matchup for him in my opinion so this is just an example of my pitching sheet looks like we have the pitcher stats on here splits versus lefties splits versus righties uh, Vegas when that comes out the uh, matchup info, and then the matchup splits versus lefty, splits versus righty. So it's got all that on there. It's got projections too. So that's what I used to put together my cheat sheet. So if you like the cheat sheet, this is just the more, um, you know, it's just the, the back work of what it is. So anyway, let's talk about pitching. So Lance Lynn, again, I said I think he's overpriced, and I want Coors Fields bats over paying up for Lance Lynn. So let's get into Wade Miley. I do like him quite a bit going against Seattle. They strike out a lot versus lefties, 26% clip, and he's been pretty good this season. I know he has a 3 ERA, but his exit is 4.35, which isn't the best, but he's pitching at home, and I think he's pretty much a lock for, I shouldn't say a lock, but I do think he's a is a really good chance of getting the win here versus um, Seattle. He's a big ground ball guy, which I do like, 53%, keeps the ball on the ground, doesn't allow a ton of hard contact. He's not a, like a 30-point kind of guy, but I do think he is a safe bet for 20 points tomorrow. And at 9100, I will take that. And then Mike Clevenger, he's just not in a very good spot. 11,100 versus the Angels, so I'm going to pass on him. Now, Steven Matz, I can see him being very popular, especially if you look at the game log for all the game log watchers. He had a complete game. I know he had a complete game. I want to say it's a complete game shutout versus Pittsburgh. I played him, so it was really nice. I think he got his 40 points, so that was really good. And he's at a decent price at 7,700. Now, I never like when the pitcher is facing the same team twice in a row because it can be tough. You know, the bats can figure him out. But just overall this season, Pittsburgh has been very bad versus left-handed pitching. They had the lowest WRC plus in the league. They have a really low team, Isolu, Team Woba. They don't strike out a ton, but I do think this is a really safe matchup for Mats, especially at this price range. And we are in, I think we're in Pittsburgh? I believe so. I might be wrong, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, so I do like Steven Matz a lot tomorrow at SP2, or really even SP1 if you want to make him your SP1, then if you want to use a cheaper guy, but... Uh, the next guy I am interested in is interested is in is Dustin May at 7600. Now, if you don't know who he is, I I mean I understand because he's brand new. Now he's going to make his first start for the Dodgers going up against San, the San Diego Padres at home. So I do like that. We like to use righties versus San Diego. Dustin May is I believe a top prospect in that organization. He has pretty good numbers. Doesn't walk a lot of guys and. Overall, just decent numbers, and I do like righties versus San Diego. So, And he's at, coming at a really good price point. He is a favorite. It's a low Vegas total. So I do like me some Dustin May. At 7,600, there's not a lot of risk there, and I don't hate the idea of just using Dustin May and Steven Matz and loading up on bats tomorrow. So that is my opinion on pitching. Let's get back into the cheat sheet. Yeah, Padres are striking out 25% of the time, too, righties. So I do like Dustin May. So I like these three guys as my core pitchers. And then catcher, we got Steven Vogt at 4,900. He has a great matchup in Coors Field versus Peter Lambert, who is just absolutely trash versus left-handed bats. So give me all the lefties from San Francisco. Then we got Jason Castro at 3,900 going up against Glenn Sparkman. And Glenn Sparkman is a guy I love loading up on lefties on. Jason Castro has been very good versus righties this season. And the Twins are one of my top stacks of the night. I do like them as a pivot off of Coors Field as I think they have similar upside as like the Rockies. So I do like the Twins a lot. 
Uh, Roberto Perez at 3,800. He's been pretty hot recently. I don't remember how he did tonight, but I know two nights ago, I believe he had a uh, or the night before, he had a double dong performance versus Urquidy and that Astros team, and he hits lefties very well this season. He's got really good numbers versus them, and Dylan Peters has not been the best pitcher in the world versus righties. So give me some Roberto Perez. I do like the Indians. I know I don't have really any listed outside of Perez, but I do think they are a decent stack, and I actually did forget to add them. I'm only working with one hand here because I got my dog sleeping on my lap right now. So yeah, I'm going to add the Indian stack on there. I kind of forgot to do that at the end. So, yeah, those are my three catchers I like. At first base, I have Brandon Belt at 4,000. He's a core play for me tomorrow. He's probably going to be one of the highest on guys. I don't understand the pricing here. He's only 4K. Steven Vogt's 900 more than Brandon Belt. I don't understand that. Uh, it's a great matchup versus Lambert. He's honestly probably my top play of the entire slate. It's a great, great home run spot, and we're in Coors Field at 4K. I just don't understand the pricing here. It's one of the highest run totals of the slate for the Giants. So give me Brandon, give me all the Brandon Belt I can handle tomorrow. And then I'll look to get my lineups different elsewhere. But I also don't mind Daniel Murphy at 5,200. Sean, Ander Sean Anderson cannot strike out lefties. He's just not a very good pitcher, and it's in course field. So not a lot to say here. I love the Rockies, lefties, and the righties. And then Pablo Sandoval at 5K. He's really expensive, and I honestly just want to play Brandon Bell here. But he's going to be lower owned because, you know, Belt's there, Murphy's there. So don't mind him using him versus Peter Lambert, just another lefty. And then at second base, we got some good options. Come on, Biggio at 4,300. He's got a good matchup versus Aaron, Books, Aaron Brooks. And uh, Brooks has struggled with lefties. He struggled with righties. The Orioles' bullpen is really bad. Kavon Biggio has been very good versus right-handed pitching this season. And it's a good park in Baltimore. So I do like Kavon Biggio quite a bit. And Scooter Jeanette at 3,500. I guess we're back to playing him. I figured we were kind of done playing him because, you know, he's going to San Francisco. It's a gross park, but... Hey, we get Coors Field now, and he is ridiculously low priced at 3500 and he should be batting cleanup, I assume. So I am all about the Scooter Jeanette train tomorrow at 3500 I do have him as a core play, as long as he's batting cleanup or like fifth or something. Other than that, I'm probably not going to be, if he's like hitting sixth, seventh, eighth in the order, I'm uh, interested. But batting fourth, I have a ton of interest there. And then Cesar Hernandez at 3500 I love the Phillies versus Ivan Nova, especially the lefties. So give me Cesar Hernandez, who should be leading off. And then at third base, we have Nolan Arenado, 5,200. Now, he is better versus lefties, but it's Sean Anderson, nothing to be scared of, and it's Coors Field. So I do love Nolan Arenado a lot. And then Vladimir Guerrero, J J Vlad Jr., we have 40, at 4,500. Again, he had a really good game last night. I believe he had two home runs and a double. I might have missed something else, but he had a really good game. He's been pretty good versus righties this season, and Aaron Brooks is nothing to be scared of, and that bullpen is atrocious. And it's a great park for hitting as well. Then we have Jake Lamb at 3,800. Uh, just I love these Washington lefties versus Joe Ross. Joe Ross has Joe Ross has been absolutely awful to left-handed pitch uh, left-handed bats this season, and I do I do think a couple of these lefties are pretty decently priced, especially Jake Lamb who hits righties very well. And then at shortstop we got Trevor Story at 5,400. Now if I have to choose between him or Arenado. I always choose Story versus the righties as he's been very good versus righties this season, although I don't think it would be too much of a problem to get both of them in your lineup if you want to make them your core plays tomorrow. But if I had to pick between one, I'm going with Story. He's got really good numbers versus righties this season. And again, Sean Anderson is just something to be scared of. And then Bo Bichette at 4,200. He should be leading off versus Aaron Brooks, and I just I played him the past two days. I know last night didn't, I know tonight didn't work out very well, but... Don't mind going with him again at 4,200, leading off for a good team. Not a good, I shouldn't say, it's a good team to target tonight, uh, today versus uh, the Baltimore Orioles and Aaron Brooks in that Baltimore bullpen. And then we have Jorge Polanco, 4,700. I love the Twins versus Glenn Sparkman. Jorge Polanco is a much better hitter from the right, uh, left side of the plate, and he, he's just part of that stack. And he should be batting around second, and I don't. if you're going to be stacking the Twins, I don't see how you can leave him off your full stacks. And I do like the price on him. You get a nice discount off of Trevor Story, and I think there's similar upside there. And then we have in the high end outfield, we have Max Kepler, 5200, who's the best baseball player of all time. He just keeps producing. I've been, I've been uh, screaming Max Kepler's name since he's been like 3900 on this channel. I just keep playing him, and it just keeps working. So I'm not gonna fix what's not what's what's not broke. So give me all the Max Kepler I can get versus Glenn Sparkman at 5200. Glenn Sparkman is atrocious versus lefties, and Kepler is elite versus righty, so there's nothing not to like here. He's going to be leading off for the Twins, one of my favorite stacks of the night. 
Then Charlie Blackman at 5,800. He's very expensive, so I can see not wanting to play him when we got guys like Story and Arenado who are uh, fairly priced. But he's been great versus uh, versus righties, and we're at cores where he just absolutely mashes right-handed pitching. So I don't mind Charlie Blackman, although he's very expensive. Then David Dahl, who's the light version of Charlie Blackman, basically. He's been really good this season versus right-handed pitching. So don't mind David Dahl at the discount. And then in the mid-range outfield, we have J.D. Martinez at 4,900. So James Paxton had an absolutely awful outing last time versus the Red Sox, and honestly, I don't see it going much better. Love the righties versus James Paxton. He has a high walk high walk rate versus them this season, higher ISO, I believe it's above 200, and just lower strikeout rates, overall worse numbers versus righties, and he's going to see a lot of good righties in this lineup, so no interest in James Paxton, and I love J.D. Martinez versus lefties, he's got an ISO near 500 versus them this season, so nothing not to like about J.D. Then Corey Dickerson, 4,800, I assume he's going to be in the lineup, if I had to project where he was hitting, I assume it's a good spot in the order. He's not going to be near the back end. He's a really good hitter versus right-handed pitching. And we love the lefties versus Ivan Nova. He's got a really low strikeout rate versus them. And I do like the Phillies as a stack. And Eddie Rosario, 4,700. He's the light version of, of Max Kepler, but that's not meant in a bad way whatsoever because being the light version of Max Kepler is, is nothing to be uh, nothing to hang your head on. I do love Eddie Rosario. He's really good versus right-handed pitching. And you know, Glenn Sparkman sucks versus lefties. And then in the value outfield, I don't have any, like, really cheap guys because, again, I'm not really looking to spit up on pitchers, so I don't think we're going to have to dumpster dive. If a good value opens up where he's, you know, a guy gets a good start, a good spot in the order, I can add that onto the cheat sheet. But as of right now, this is all I got. Bryce Harper at 4,400. Just a lefty versus Yvonne Nova, so I think Harper's going to carry some ownership tomorrow. We got David Peralta at 4K, lefty versus Joe Ross, who I already talked about. I want to stack the lefties against. And then with Merrifield at 4,400 versus Martin Perez. Love with Merrifield versus lefties. He's much better versus them. Got a really high ISO and just overall better numbers. And then if we look at the core plays and top stacks, I got Brandon Belt at 4K, Scooter Jeanette at 3,500, Bryce Harper at 4,300. I got something wrong here. So he's either 4,300 or he's 4,400. He's around that range. So I'll just delete that. But And then the top stacks for me are going to be cores. So I like the Giants and the Rockies. Twins are right behind them, though. I love them as a GPP pivot off of cores in case that duds, which I really don't think it's going to dud because we have two bad pitchers on the mound. But you never know. It's baseball. Things can happen. And then I like the D-backs lefties quite a bit, the Blue Jays overall, the Phillies specifically, the lefties, and then the Indians as well versus Dylan Peters. But anyway, guys, that's all I got for the video. Remember to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. I'd really appreciate that. Sorry, this video is coming out really late. I was recording a podcast with Andrew for UFC. So if you're interested in UFC, check out the podcast I'll be uploading right after this video. Anyway, wish you guys a great start to the weekend and the best of luck tomorrow.